Okay, so while you guys are waiting to get into your breakout rooms, let's make sure you guys are uploading your assignments and then also linking your um, projects to this um, sign up sheet. Okay, Anna. Okay. How are we doing? We good? I think there's another loose dog. I hear somebody yelling, come here, come here. Oh my gosh, you guys. Do you guys have dogs in your neighborhood? Elise, can you hear that? Dogs are going crazy. Okay. All right, are you ready? I need somebody to repeat the directions for this small group share out. Lindsay. Can you just repeat what you're supposed to do? So in a small group share out, we're sharing out our final projects for our Of Mice and Men. Um, okay. um, we have to summarize what we made and why we did that. And while we're sharing out, the people in our group have to listen and make comments on either the doc or the slideshow we made. Um, and then we have to share out our response poem. Um, no, that's after, after oh, we come back. Yeah. Okay. All right. While you're explaining, people are gonna be looking, right? So I put in the chat, paste a link of your project, right? To the, into the chat when, when you guys get into those small, small groups, okay? And then that way, just double check that you guys are able to, um, have people make a comment on your documents. Okay. I'm still waiting on a couple of you guys to um, link your projects to the um, sign up prep. Yeah, the sign up. Hello, he can do you know where to go? It's in the um, announcement section of Canvas, and then there should be the period to sign up for the Of My and Men final project. All right, I think we're ready, okay? Don't forget to drop your link into the chat so your people can see. All right, here we go. Anna, I'm gonna, we're gonna hang. Ms. Kavlati, can I talk to you after? Yeah. Sophia, are you stuck? <laughs> well, how do you unstuck yourself? You got to join room one. It won't let me join the breakout room. <laughs> Why? I don't know how to help you. Oh, can I just move you? I mean, I'm looking at this thing. Oh, there did it work? Okay. Hey girl, you doing okay? I'm good. Okay, what's up? Nothing. 
I just I I missed last week, so. Mhm. So did you not get your project completed or? No, I didn't. Okay. So why don't you do this? Why don't you get into your break the breakout room so you can at least see what other people did? Okay. Okay, and then you can kind of figure it out. Um, it looks like you did um, the web quest, so that was pretty manageable. What about your poem? Did you get your poem done? No, I didn't. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just make sure to put you in a breakout room with people that did the poem so that you can kind of see what's going on. But that's in the in Canvas. I'm just gonna show you where that is. Oh, it's the poetic response to the introduction of Harlem Renaissance. It's in 3.5. Do you see that? Yes. Okay, so you're going to have to make a copy of that. And we use that as an interactive slideshow. Okay, so it's like a workbook. And then toward the end, after you're done checking out like all the poems and stuff like that, you're going to practice like doing a response poem. So it's like 14 line poem responding to the poems that you you went over. There's three of them that you can choose one of them or you can join them all together, but I have an example in there to help you out. Okay. Okay. All righty. Thank you. No problem. How Lenny died and it kind of gives more insight into what Curly might have been thinking. Uh, and it sort of extends the ending in a way. So yeah, the theme was just like expanding the universe of the book more, giving more background information, uh, reinforcing the themes of hopes and dreams and how reality can affect them. Yeah, here's, uh, let's see. Here's my work cited and images. Okay. Um, Wait, the, so you're gonna, you guys are commenting, yeah, on this stuff. Did you guys finish that already? You jumped on his slides and commented and things like that. What kind of, what kind of comments? Like constructive or just like, oh, good job. Oh, no, not. I mean, good job is good, but like um, maybe questions that um, that relate to why he chose to do what he did, why he um, selected to go this way instead of the other way or whatever. Um, you can also say, you know, positive comments. That would be good. You want to uplift each other. Okay. So you made newspaper articles. Nice, very good. So there was a lot of things you could have chosen from this, yeah. Um, you could have approached it from like a historical context, a writer's context where you're actually taking liberties with the story and really making it your own. So pretty cool, yay. Okay, who's next? Um me i'm gonna share uh here's the link i'm gonna share a poem on my slideshow it's kind of a long poem but it talks about every important character in the book so it starts with slim then candy then crooks then curly then curly's wife then george then lenny and then at the end you'll see on slide nine it will show my representation of each character and how we can relate each single character that I talked about to what we're going through now and how you can see like Slim he shows empathy and Candy he shows the feeling of loss like how he lost his dog and Crooks is discrimination and Curly's wife is loneliness etc and I don't know if you want me to read the poem because it's kind of really long maybe <laughs> it choose... might make more sense if you read it yeah. aloud maybe like read the first couple of slides so that we can hear your voice and like the 
the pace of your poem. Okay. And, and we can read the rest, yeah. Okay. I am slim. I'm well respected at the ranch. These dark monsters don't scare me no more. They say my hatchet face is ageless. It's an eyesore. But I took ages to overcome my loneliness. I've been looked at as this mentor, but nobody knows my loss, my pain, what I've gone through, but fighting day by day. I've gone through despair, but I can't let my demons take over. So Candy, you can have any one of the pups you want. Oh. I am Candy. You seen what they've done to my dog tonight? They say he wasn't no good to himself nor nobody else. How do they know he wasn't good to me? The dog kept me out of these dark monsters. I ought to have shot that dog myself. I should ought to let no stranger shoot my dog. But now that he's been set free, I've been feeling better. He once saved me and I don't feel so empty. I now have plans with that farm and I won't feel so alone in this new place I can call home. I am crooks. I don't have a home, but this here is my room. Nobody's got any right in here but me. My color has got the best of me because I don't look like the clouds, I'm treated as dirt. These dark monsters didn't just appear, I was born with them. I said I wouldn't want to go no place like that farm, but thinking about it, it would be nice to not feel so alone. I've never had a family, so I wouldn't know if you're being nice to me, Lenny. I am curly. I want to start a family. At least that's what you're supposed to do. I've got a wife, but have you seen her? I can't find her anywhere. Part of me thinks she's having an affair. You see my hand got caught in a machine. And I swear, I can give someone the, I can give someone the good old one too. I'm a champion, but that doesn't relate back to my happiness. Um, I am Candace Brown, but my real name is Curly's wife. You could also call me Jailbait, Tart, or Tramp. These dark monsters have many names for me. I never get to talk to nobody. I get awful lonely. I may seem carefree, but deep down I had a dream. But who cares, right? Because we could all care less about the wife that is supposed to be home and stay put. I was a natural actress, but that wasn't my storyline during this time. At some point, everyone has to give up something, right? Um, you might as well finish the rest, so. <laughs> I am George. Suddenly, I gave up everything to become this parent figure, filling and filling my glass of liquor until I no longer have anything to give. These dark monsters are exhausting me. We run around California looking for work, but every stop we take is another quicker move we need to make. The longer I'm with him, the stronger I feel to strive for our dream. But there are always obstacles that can lead in unexpected directions. I now feel guilt because, I, because what I tried to rebuild resulted in me losing my best friend. Now I can never tell him how much he meant to me. Sometimes it's just best to pretend. Letting him know that the cave is unnecessary. But on the other hand, being with him can result in me giving him a backhand. Behind him walked his opposite, a huge man. I am Lenny. These dark monsters are messing with my head. It all began because I like to pet soft things. The mouse, her hair, and that stupid pup. They all accidentally ended up dead. George hates me and I know why. Hide in the brush till he comes. I think that's what he said. This farm is our dream and the more I try, because I remembered to go to the brush, not that cave, but my best friend did what was right because I couldn't learn to behave. I couldn't overcome my dark monsters. Oh man. <laughs> it's kind of depressing, but <laughs> that's it, the end. And then I kind of wrote like a really long thing in my notes on page nine. I saw about, that. About like what the representation is. So you can look at it later. I don't really want to read it. <laughs> okay. So I think the one on candy got me and I, I might be because I really love my dogs, but um, I think you hit each character like straight, straight to the bone. Like, yeah, I tried to like, cause I know everyone at least can relate to one of the characters, like how you said you relate to candy specifically. Mm -hmm. but like other people might relate to crooks because of discrimination or slim because they've already felt the pain that they've gone through or um george because they've had so many responsibilities when they're younger or whatever it is that going right. on right like the endless responsibilities it's almost too much for some uh, someone to take so um alexis so for you like the example I would, I would give would be this on slide three. I said that these are brutal truths. 
I wonder what it would be like if we knew each other's truths. I think we'd, treat, we'd all treat each other a little better. Okay, so, um, you know, we're just looking to extend the, um, the conversation here a little bit. We're looking to pay tribute to the person's hard work. Okay, so love it. Very good. I don't know. I think you could, as your, um, if you can somehow create an iMovie for this and have your voice over, this would be a very powerful piece that I am willing to, um, yeah, I think you should do it. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. If you have time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Alexis, I'll look over your things um, after. I'm really glad that you finished though. Okay. And then Anna, go ahead. You can comment too. It's all good. Okay. And we're, or, and we end up finding the stock market and Lenny thinks it's cool. He thinks that, wow, there's so much stuff going on. He's kind, it's kind of over stimulating him. And what they go inside, George ends up buying stocks because, well, it's George. From all his money from gambling. And he, he ends up finding a stock called Harley Davidson. Well, Harley Davidson was still kind of, I guess you call it young at the time. Because they were founded in 1903, 1904. So they're still young. They're still trying to make money. George ends up buying some stocks, like two or three stocks into that. And off of those stocks, he makes money, lots of money. And so George gets confident. He buys more stocks of that and he makes more money. Now, instead of saving it all up and losing it, kind of like all the stock market did in 19, the 1930s, he pulled all the money out and invested in, he pulled out money out, invested in his own business. He invested in soup because, well, he invested in soup because at this time he knew that soup was kind of valuable because nobody really had job. Hi. Are you guys done? Did you mean comment like comment on the doc or comment in the breakout room like just talking oh like get on their doc and comment so oh. like highlight the parts that you oh yeah so maybe do you have each other's um links or do you guys need to drop it in the chat again i still have the tabs open okay What's your name? Wait, go. Ribbon. What? His name is Grayson. Oh my gosh. You know, I have a, a nephew that his name is Grayson Kamakana. Walt Jin. Yeah. 
How funny. How old are you? Six. Six. I was going to say nine. Way off. All right. Yeah, because I was born with big feet and big hands. Oh, right on. Right on. So are you um, Makaya's little brother? Is she the boss of you? Or are you the boss of her? <laughs> Very good. You're lucky to have a good sister. She feeds you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, lucky. Yeah. Okay. All right. How are you guys doing? Did you guys finish? All right. So I think we're done. I don't know. I got to check one more breakout room, but then we'll transition. So if you guys need to go look at your poems, okay, then we'll share out those poems in just a bit, but I'm going to close the breakout rooms. I just need to check on one group. Okay. Bye, Grayson. Are you guys done now? Yeah. Okay. We're going to stop. Okay. There. All right. I was on mute, obviously. Um, I want you guys to click on this part. So this is last week's uh, module, the poetic response to the introduction of the Harlem Renaissance. Okay. And so we should have your poems underneath here. Okay. So um, as you guys share out your poems with a partner or another person, um, make sure you get on here so that you can comment on each other's poem. Um, after you're done, after you're done presenting your poems, what I would like you to do is point out a couple of things. All right. Why did you call out this and that? Okay. Um, and um, maybe just some thoughts behind your poem. Okay. So shouldn't take more than like five or six minutes. Okay. So I'm going to stop my share here. And I'm going to recreate the rooms. Okay, you guys ready? Everybody got their poems up and running? All right, here we go. Hey y'all, I think I'm gonna go first. Okay, I just to like preface this, I knew that it didn't have to rhyme, but for me, it was like easier to make it. Um, so mine's, it goes like this. I am no strange fruit. I can laugh, I can cry. I can sing, I can dance. If you leave me, I'll die. I am no strange fruit. I'm a friend, I'm a stranger, I'm a lover, I'm a brother, I'm not just a color. I am no strange fruit, I can feel and I'm real. I can hurt, but I heal, I'm no object to steal. There are no strange fruit, it's a misconception. Oh my God, that was my piece. So basically my piece was talking about, um, um, the strange fruit and how like um, how instead of a strange fruit you can be human and you can um, 
you can you can have feelings and you're just you're more than just your skin tone yeah From what we talked about, um, you did a pretty good job. If this is your first draft, I mean, um, imagine what another revision will allow this to become. Okay, so really cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, I like that part where it says, I can hurt, and but I can heal. Like, it's not and I can heal, it's but I can heal, right? So there's a different, there's a different connotation with just choosing a simple conjunction, right? Instead of and, you chose but, like, however, I can heal, right? Come at me, mm -hmm. I'll survive. Very good, okay, who's next? Uh, I can go next. All right, let me just find mine real quick. I know, I'm, it's just hard to try and find each other's, where are you? Where's the top? Uh, I think I'm towards the top. Okay. Of course you are. And so my poem is called Not Again. So not again is the story of the past being repeated. The question must be asked. Not again. Was the problem really solved? All the suffering truly ended? Were the chains dissolved and the bond actually mended? Not again. Is everyone free? Did they undo the wrongs, including you and me? Is the racism honestly gone? Um, so like the thought process I had behind this was kind of like history seems to repeat itself a lot. And if we're trying to be better, it shouldn't. We have to really take a look and see if we're being better than the people that came before us. Oh, hold that thought because we're going to talk about that after we're done with this. Nice job. Oh, I have the best students. I seriously have the best students. I don't know why. So lucky. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't want it. To, I didn't want to make it like it would be too obvious what I'm trying to say. Because if then it doesn't seem as a poem. Yeah, that's all. I don't even know what I'm <laughs> Um, Ms. Kaba too. I don't know what to name my poem. Find a line that you like and name it that. Where's your poem? Is it toward the top? It's so hard to navigate through this thing because I can't find you. Mine's on the bottom. Okay, yours is on the bottom. <clears throat> okay. You guys, I have to tell you guys something. I have really good students. Yeah, I wrote home is pretty good. I was reading through some too. Actually. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, right there, down to the bone. That could be your title. Okay. <laughs> right? You got to ask Jaden Bettis to go look at Jaden Bettis's poems. Okay. You know how everybody in, um, of mice and men has like ugly truths about them, right? Like that's kind of like what you did. Yeah, is like call out the truths. And that is pretty powerful. Wait, For wait. me, I think that if we all knew each other's like deep truths, like we would treat each other nicer, you know? Yeah. Like, it's not all strawberries and flowers. <laughs> not even close. Maybe autumn, but not here. You know, it's not how it goes. Okay, autumn, are, did you share already? Did you guys, are you guys commenting on each other's work? Yeah, we were just talking about it too. That's why, like why I wrote it and stuff. Cool, cool. Did you finish yours, autumn? Yes. Okay, let me look at yours. 
Okay, so let's make sure that you guys get in and like put some comments on each other's, um, you know, in oh. the, yeah. Where are you? Oh, you called it why? Yeah. <laughs> Mm. I like that um, you, um, I, what, st the second stanza where you say, but even now I wonder every day, why is it turning left and right? This world is cruel in every which way. The color of someone's skin is what makes us fight. Yeah, it almost creates this picture of the globe, you know, like a regular a globe and how you can turn it one way or the other. You know, I don't know if you ever played with a globe when you were like in elementary school, but it's quite fun to just like spin the globe and then say, I want to go here. Right. And then you most times it's in the ocean because, you know, the ocean's the majority of the globe but i mean sometimes you're lucky enough to land someplace different you know um when we look at each other's the color of our skin i mean why is that our like life sentence you know it's interesting to grow up in hawaii interesting okay i think everybody's done thank you i wanted to check you guys out I'm on mute. I yes, thank you. How are you guys doing? You guys good? Yeah. Alohi Kea, we gotta find your um, project. Where did it go? <laughs> thank you for coming back, Sophia. What happened? You got booted out. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm enjoying these poems. If you can, I would. I would have you guys look through um, some of these poems. Make sure you guys comment on um, at least a couple other poems. Um, even the kids in your in my other class, you'd be surprised how well some of you guys can write. And these are just drafts. Okay, so before we move on, let's go ahead and do this. I want you guys to open up a document. Just a just a new doc. Okay, so go ahead and open up a new doc. Okay, and I want you to title it My Collection of Poems. Or you can put your name there. Sophia Wilson's Collection of Poems 2021. Okay, so, and then go ahead and adjust the shared settings so that I can comment on it and then share it with me. Okay, put my name in there. A-L-C-A-B-A-T-U at K-S-B-E dot E-D-U. So I only saw a couple of presentations for the, um, of Mice and Men projects, but I'm gonna just give a shout out to Jaden Bettis and Kaolapa. Um, unreal, unreal, okay. Jaden Bettis wrote these like poems on each of the characters that have those like ugly truths about them. And they're, they're almost like they almost kind of rock you because it calls out to if we really knew about each other and like the ugly truths we hold and you know that not everything is strawberries and flowers I think we would really treat each other better we really would okay so note on that and then Kaolapa did a really cool thing with um, newspaper articles lots of um, site 
sites referenced as well. Um, so he took more of like a historical approach. Am I right? Okay, so very cool. So just uh, also closing out the final projects for of mice and men. Um, for you guys, I just want to make it clear, like when I give you guys these final projects, right? I'm I'm trying to push you push you guys to be more. Um, give your give yourself another level of expectation, and I don't want to name that for you. Okay, so I think you guys are starting to understand. Like, I'm going to tell you guys, okay, you need to show me what you can do, and I'm going to give you almost as little directions as possible so that you can come up with something for yourself, right? Um, and I know for some of you guys, that's super frustrating, okay? But for your, the rest of your lives, you're gonna have to just make, create things, right? You can't just keep regurgitating things, right? And so I'm asking you guys to, to stretch yourselves and to challenge yourselves. So I'm hoping when I go through your, your final projects, I am completely amazed, okay? Am I gonna find um, projects that maybe were pulled together at the last moment? Yeah, maybe, okay? But just know that these are like final projects. They're open for like two weeks. I don't just give it, give it to you guys like two days before it's due. Okay, so I'm encouraging you guys to really start thinking about it when I introduce it and open up the assignment to you guys. And then if you need the time to bounce ideas off of your classmates or me or whatever, then do it, right? Because your ideas are golden, okay? And some of you guys really showed that today. So mahalo for that. All right, let's move on. Today is like... Um, poetry day in the neighborhood. Okay, so we are going to go to this um, poem by Amanda Gorman. Okay, so let's get back into our modules. We are going to be looking at the hill we climbed. Okay, so as we do this, okay, I need you guys to go down to the second line. All right, so this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be making a copy of her poem. That's right there. It's a link. We're going to be summarizing each section. So what I did was I bold and then I made regular text. I bolded and made regular text. I want you guys to identify some of the symbolism and explain what they represent. There's a lot of symbols in her poem. Okay, and then also I want you to annotate some lines by asking questions, making connections and maybe highlighting lines that make an impact. So I'm going to start, um, the poem for you guys. Does everybody have their copy of her poem for your own version? Okay. Um, and the reason why you're going to be doing that is this. And I'm just going to show you guys before we get started with this poem. Okay. It should look like this. Okay. So we can start with even the title, The Hill We Climb, right? And we can look at the word hill and climb, right? And say that the hill is the symbol for obstacles, social injustices of the past. And when we climb, we are striving or overcoming. Okay, so I'm just giving you guys a heads up as far as what your, your poems should look like, all right? I also wanna call out, um, the concept of awamo kuleana, right? And so when you awamo kuleana, you are, you are carrying a sense of responsibility with you. So what does that mean, right? That means like we all have responsibilities to our family, to our school, right? To the people that came before us, the people that have not, um, have not been born yet, okay? Um, and we have, you know, a responsibility to do something with the opportunities that have been given to us. So as you guys listen to this poem, okay, I want it to be kind of a side-by-side -side thing. 
look at the poem. Okay, we're just going to go through it one time. Okay, if you need to highlight something because something caught your ear, then go ahead and do that. But right now, I will play the poem for you, and then we'll move on. Everybody good? Okay, so just as a disclaimer, um, this poem is um, the poem from um, the inauguration. Okay, and um, what's important about this poem is the use of figurative language and the message, all right? So I'm not sharing this poem because I'm telling you guys um, to be in one political party or another, okay? That you guys decide for yourself. I could care less. I just want you guys to do your work, so. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you the heads up on that and then we'll get started. Has anybody seen this poem? You have, Alohikea, very good. Jaden, you too? Okay. She also presented a poem during the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, that was the most boring Super Bowl ever, but um, you know what? What, Kaolapa? You liked it? No, I just liked uh, the strategy, seeing all the strategies being put in place. I know it might seem boring. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I mean, the Buccaneers defense came in clutch, you know. But, I mean, the, the weekend, we could have watched a video on him with those masks. I don't know what they look like. I don't know, BVDs or something over their face. I don't know. It's kind of funny. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Do you guys all see that? Okay. And please nobody flash a like Bernie Sanders meme with him, like, you know, at Hilo, Two Ladies Kitchen or something. All right, here we go. You guys ready? Madam Vice President, Mr. Emhoff, Americans and the world. When day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace, and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always just is. And yet the dawn is ours before we knew it. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. We, the successors of a country and a time where a skinny black girl descended from slaves and raised by a single mother can dream of becoming president only to find herself reciting for one. And yes, we are far from polished, far from pristine, but that doesn't mean we are striving to form a union that is perfect. We are striving to forge our union with purpose, to compose a country committed to all cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first. We must first put our differences aside. We lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony for all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true. That even as we grieved, we grew. That even as we hurt, we hoped. That even as we tired, we tried. That we'll forever be tied together, victorious. Not because we will never again know defeat, but because we will never again sow division. Scripture tells us to envision that everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree, and no one shall make them afraid. If we're to live up to our own time, then victory won't lie in the blade, but in all the bridges we've made. That 
is the promise to glade the hill we climb if only we dare it because being american is more than a pride we inherit it's the past we step into and how we repair it we've seen a force that would shatter our nation rather than share it would destroy our country if it meant delaying democracy and this effort very nearly succeeded but while democracy can be periodically delayed, it can never be permanently defeated. In this truth, in this faith we trust, for while we have our eyes on the future, history has its eyes on us. This is the era of just redemption. We feared it at in its inception. We did not feel prepared to be the heirs of such a terrifying hour, but within it we found the power to author a new chapter, to offer hope and laughter to ourselves. So while once we asked, how could we possibly prevail over catastrophe? Now we assert. How could catastrophe possibly prevail over us? We will not march back to what was, but move to what shall be, a country that is bruised but whole, benevolent but bold, fierce and free. We will not be turned around or interrupted by intimidation because we know our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. But one thing is certain. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind a country better than the one we were left with every breath from my bronze pounded chest. We will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the gold limbed hills of the West. We will rise from the wind swept Northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the lake rimmed cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun baked South. We will rebuild reconcile and recover in every known nook of our nation, in every corner called our country, our people diverse and beautiful will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade of flame and unafraid the new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light, if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. Alrighty, so we have this poem, okay? We have this poem written by Amanda Gorman, 22 years old. How old are you guys right now, 15? Unreal, okay. She is um, quite crafty with her words. So let's go ahead, um, hang on. Okay, so as you're looking at the poem, start picking it apart. I'm gonna show you a couple more things. Okay, so I'm looking at things like when, right? When day comes, right? So what is that? It's a sim symbol for opportunity because it's not if, the day comes it's when day comes right so already you have this imagery of the sun rising right next the word light right light equals hope a better tomorrow right um this word right here shade i want to talk to you guys about the word shade right where we can where we can find a light in this never-ending shade right um when i when i looked at this word shade this is what I thought. More than just darkness, the shade is the illusion that light is there to bring us hope, right? Um, calling, calling the um, the presence of both. In order to have shade, you have to have light, right? But yet, it's kind of like an illusion because. It's like, oh, it's temporary. Is it really temporary? The shade, right? And you know what the shade is, right? We all know when something's shady, okay? Next, if you notice, lots of alliteration. Just go ahead and point a couple of them out. There's just so many, right? 
over here, we have um, a play on the word justice, right? Because just is, is like the status quo, right? As we know, the status quo is the, oh, it is what it is, so just let it go, right? And so she's playing on this, what is, what just is, isn't always justice. And that is pretty a powerful statement, okay? Um, so we just can't settle for what just is, okay? One other thing right here, if you guys look, this is the whole like collective future, right? I don't know, I think that's what kind of makes me um, get a little bit of chicken skin, like, like the hippie in me starts dancing around or something. Why? Because it's calling for all of us to do something, okay? So um, I'm gonna have you guys take about, I don't know, three, three minutes, three to five minutes. Go ahead and look through things to point out. Okay, go ahead. Sophia, you're back. Okay, so you know what we're doing? We're, we're just looking at the poem and then you're, you're highlighting, picking things out that look like, that are symbols. You're explaining some things, right? Okay, you're looking for um, poetic devices or literary devices. So under that would be like sound devices such as alliteration, rhyming, Play on words. Jaden, seriously, you look like you're in the matrix. Where are you going, buddy? You saving are you saving us from the future? Okay, and then we'll be um, sharing out at least one or two lines that really impacted you. Find that, okay? Find that one line you're gonna drop into the chat in just a bit. Kala'i, is that his Hawaiian name, Keanu? I know, you don't have to explain it. I know, I know, I know. Was that movie even out while you guys were born? Were you alive when this movie came out? I'm gonna look. No. Oh my gosh. The Matrix came out in 1999. You're not 21, 22 years old. Oh my gosh, that's so weird. When did I get so old? One of my students called me middle age last class. And then he said, no, Kumu, you're not old. You're just middle age. I was like, middle age? Obviously, it wasn't in this class. 
because we would all be laughing. But I said, really, I'm old. Did you fail them? No, I didn't fail him. I just am teasing him to death now. Like when I have to click the the mouse pad, I have to warm up my finger so that, you know, my arthritis. Or I tell him that he wouldn't know because he's not middle age. I don't know who Kamau is. Oh no, I know who Kamau is. He's my boy. He wouldn't, he would probably tell me that, but it wasn't. Like, Kumu, you're middle age. No, not middle age. And I know some of you guys have parents that are the same age as me. And and I know, I know. Good thing you have your mask on. You're like, yeah, you're like beginning middle age, whatever. It's okay. I'm good with it. Whatever. Okay. Being that mate, the matrix started in 1990. Let's go ahead and get in the chat and let's share out one of the one of the lines or two that really caught you, that really got you. You can just copy and paste it right off your dock. Ooh, ooh. Nice. Okay. Yep, that's the one I'm going to talk about. Okay. Okay, so Elise Auna, can you please talk about why you chose these two lines? Um, uh, because I like the, the, the rhyming and also like it's talking about how there's pride be in being American, but there's also mistakes that have been made and we inherit this reputation and we can also repair what has been done um, right. to improve the reputation. The repair is important, right? And the truth, right? The bloody truth of, you know what? There were some things that happened in the past. We're not going to pretend that they didn't happen, but we're going to fix it, right? So you can, you can almost feel the weight of the word repair, right? You can almost feel... Um, Kind of like the gravity of, hey, we got to go and do this. And then the other one that I wanted to talk about would be um, Kaolapa, yours. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. Go ahead and talk about that. That's beautiful. It's like um, optimistic thinking because you can always say that it's over or that we have to start something completely new, but in reality, we can just work on what we have. It's not impossible. We just all need to you know, work together. Right. I think if like, we, even, even for ourselves, if we know that we're just like a work in progress, we can kind of be kinder to ourselves even. Yeah, so very cool. I like that um, you guys chose some of these lines here. Gosh, and um, I'm going to encourage you guys to really listen to how she performs her poem because we're going to just, just a reminder, your final for this semester is to do a spoken word poem. You good with that, Dylan? <laughs> You're like, okay, cool. Um, there's going to be a research paper before that so that we can get all our facts and all of our details straight because the worst thing you could do is create this awesome poem and something's not credible. Okay, so um, what we're gonna be doing is right now, you just think of your brain and your heart and your soul as um, a repository, right? A place where you put all of your knowledge and your experiences. And what you're doing is you're, you're slowly building that poem you're writing for the end of the year. Okay, so everybody good on that? Okay. All righty. So let's get back into Canvas. 
Okay, as we get in, we get back into Canvas, um, we go back to um, Harlem Renaissance, okay, 3.6. Um, and then just quickly go back to the hill we climb. Um, below, what you have is just a quick discussion board. Just go ahead, why do you think, what is the purpose of the poem? Just one or two sentences, real fast. One or two sentences. What is the purpose of this poem? Sophia, wrong place. You, you're going to go back into Canvas. It's a discussion board for the hill we climb, and then you're going to drop it into the discussion board. Okay, so as you guys um, finish your discussion board, what is the purpose of this poem? Um, I hope you guys notice a couple of things like like the use of rhythm, how she slows down certain words to make it rhyme even, right? Or she slows down and then speeds up, how she's gentle with some words and how she's really intense with, with other words, okay? Very important that you take a look at that, almost study it, okay? I'm gonna be throwing a bunch of spoken word poems at you so that you can um, get a feel for what it should sound like. Um, and hopefully you can kind of get a feel for what you sound like. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so once you're done with that, we can move on. Okay, everybody good? You guys know where we are in the hill we climb discussion board, yeah? Okay, good. We got people popping up already. Very good. Okay, good. Wonderful. As you finish that, we'll move on to our selected poetic response. So I need you guys to go ahead and click on this worksheet and make a copy for yourself. Um, people are still sending in um, just a copy of the assignment. Okay, so make sure when you rename it, you add your name. Okay, so if you look, there's like C2 social justice, injustice poems, like make sure you change C2 because that's my abbreviation for my last name, Kaba2, um, and change it to yours. Okay, so go ahead and make a copy. Make sure you change the settings to anyone with the link can comment. Okay, so everybody good? Where's Dylan? Dylan, you good? Okay, sharing my screen again. So this is going to be your second attempt at a poetic response, okay? So what you're gonna do is you guys can click on this link right here, or you can choose one of these poems. So my suggestion to you would be to really, it's like Ross, right? You, you walk in Ross and you kind of browse through the, the aisles, right? That's what you're gonna do at these poems. There should be a poem that jumps out at you, kind of like the, um, the artwork pieces that you guys got to look at. I really enjoyed reading what moved you. 
or what was like really cool to you and the pieces that you chose um, to highlight in, in the artwork. Okay, so anyway, go, go ahead and look through these poems and then you're going to copy and paste the poem on this left side. Your response poem is going on this right side. Got it? Okay, so if you guys look real fast, right? I did this same thing with um, the poem that um, I created in response to this strange fruit. I'm expecting you guys to explain on the right-hand side through comments, can? Okay, so minimum 14 lines, but you don't have to write, you know, an epic poem, okay? That's just a number. I'm looking at a couple of you guys, you're like, but what if I write like three pages? Mm. Good to go on that. Okay, so that should be pretty low key. And then, what time is it? Okay, yeah, why don't you go ahead, um, take about five minutes to click through some of these poems. Is that a cat? Let me see. Oh, what's your cat's name? We name our animals um, other animals. So this cat is named Polar Bear. <laughs> that is the second cat I saw today. They're like um, live stress animals or something like. Look, a tail. <laughs> okay, so go ahead, check out the poem, see which one works for you. Okay, so you should be checking that out. I never thought cats were, I mean, I know cats are cute, but I never thought I would really like cats. And my sister got a black cat. And I thought, oh my gosh, black cats, they're not very cute. They're kind of ominous and kind of spooky. But her black cat is so cute. His name is Lily. Anybody else have a cat? Really? You guys have cats? Elise, you have a cat? Hmm. My grandma has three cats, yeah. I have a friend who has like eight cats. I'm like, oh, it's kind of early to be a cat lady. Anybody found the poem they like already? No. Sophia, did you find one yet? Okay. So once you do, copy and paste it onto the left-hand side and then you're good to go. Okay. I think um, we're pretty much good to go. Um, if you guys look at my screen that I'm still sharing, can you guys go on to the next module? Okay, there's a copy of this worksheet. What I'm going to be doing is, well, what you are going to be doing is we're going to be making a bridge between the Harlem Renaissance and the Hawaiian Renaissance so that we can create a Hawaiian Renaissance poem as well. Okay, so what I need you guys to do is just get a feel for the timeline. So here's your timeline um, that you're going to make a copy of and fix the settings. Okay, so I should see you guys pop up in just a moment. There you go. Okay, make a copy of this. There's this article right here. You see right here, fill in the timeline below based on the information in the article. The article is right here, okay? All you're gonna do is look through it and then you can copy and paste your information here. When I give you information, 
things like this to do during cohort B, it shouldn't take you that long, okay? So I'm trying to frame this around the, this is you guys like just learning about something to some extent. Everybody good on that? It shouldn't take you more than like five minutes. And if it does, then, then bad for me, okay? Just trying to get you guys um, some kind of context before you move on because I cannot wait to hear your Hawaiian Renaissance poems. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna stop my share. And then I have five. My mom really likes cats. Oh, five cats. No dogs, Alohikea. No dogs. My dog died. Oh. Well, I'm gonna have to write a poem about that. I don't know. One of my dogs has started peeing like all over the place, which means that, you know, it's getting old. What, why are you guys laughing? That's what humans do too. They get old and they just can't stop peeing. Not like dogs, but I mean, <laughs> whatever. So I'm gonna have to brace myself for Molly Monster. Anyway, I'm going to excuse class a little bit early today so you guys can look through the poems and we, so we don't have to see each other's faces unless you want to, I'll stay back, okay? How's it going? Good? Don't forget to do your IXL and your timeline, okay? Lindsay, got it? Okay, all right, you guys can go. I love cats too, for some reason. They're fluffy. Bye, Kaolapa. Bye, Kalai. Bye, Lindsay. Yeah, Alexis, go away. Yeah, all right. All right. No, no, no. Sierra, I see the top of your head. What's going on? You're in the shadows. Okay, I just wanted to say um my stuff is late <laughs> okay i'll do it this afternoon what happened um i was doing it in the afternoon and then i went to go help my dad then i came back and i fell asleep then i woke up at like late at night and then i started working it working on it at night to finish it you guys are killing me who says, who's sitting? Cadence. Oh, okay. Um, All right. Boo Boo had um, an allergic reaction, so that's what I was dealing with. Okay. Did Sierra have an allergic reaction too to homework? Yeah, I was so tired that I had an allergic reaction. <laughs> oh my God. You guys, pull it together. You guys can do this. Okay. But I did grade your other thing that you sent me at 12.20. What are you doing up at 12.20? I don't think 12.20 is that late. I think... Okay. What do you do when it's light then? Whoa. Well, I don't know. Yeah. What are you, a vampire? A little bit. No, you, you guys have to like get your work done so that you can sleep. That's why you're so grouchy. You guys got to sleep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Past days I've been having like three hours of sleep. So. Oh, I am pretty sure that a number of my students are doing that because each student I talk to about why you're not doing your homework. I've stayed up so late. There's a Spanish workshop or blah blah blah. I don't know what those are, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Bye. Email me. Bye. 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 Sure. Okay, so the homework, Elise. The, the homework is which one? I excel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the and then the Hawaiian Renaissance thing. Yeah. But that's like due in like two days. Yeah. Uh -huh. and you guys know that your cohort B days are like days for this class, right? Yeah. Okay. But good. I, I do. Uh, I do other homework. Well, do that homework during the other time. Well, uh, I have a lot of homework to do. Okay. All so right. Wait, and then the poetic response. Yes. Uh, 14 lines. Right? Yeah. 
-huh. You can do this. Your um your final project came out pretty good. Uh -huh. Yeah. Clearly, I ripped off your training wheels. I'm like, I'm not responding. Uh -huh. Yeah, you did fine. You always do fine. Mm. You don't look happy. Uh, okay? I'm very uh, stressed right now. Oh, no, 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 no. This class is supposed to be fun. Um, well, for you, it might. <laughs> be it's a whole different experience. Ah. Oh, also, oh wait, I can't. So you know when you were talking about how like someone called you middle age? Middle but, age! And then I was like, before you start calling me Tutu, I should be calling you Tutu. I call myself, when I used to coach soccer, I called myself grandma so that the kids wouldn't have like all this high expectation of me trying to beat them to the ball okay because soccer. i had to defuse that one yeah soccer running mm. fun Jaden, you play soccer you play sports no um i do cross country and track and i've tried tennis before holy cow and gymnastics for six years but that is like oh, wow. over <laughs> right whoa that's, ooh, that's a cross country i don't know how you guys do it <laughs> Yeah, I don't know myself do that either. Yeah. Okay. So what? You can do this, Elise. You got to check out Jaden's poems. Oh my gosh, you would love them. <laughs> I think it's better if I like make like a voiceover. Yeah. Or something and then they can actually hear it instead of have to read. Yes. But yes. yeah, cuz I don't know if it makes that much sense if you don't read it because some of it it's it's like I don't know. I don't like rhyming too much, but I don't know. It's hard. It's confusing my way of like putting stuff together. I think it's fine. And I think that if you put together the video, then I think you can get some extra points for that. Okay. Okay. I'll probably do it like this weekend. Yeah. Just email me. Okay. Awesome. Okay, Elise. 14 <sighs> lines. A really short article and I excel. Okay. <laughs> you're you're like trying to guilt trip me into something. No, so, some other people don't like English. That's why maybe they don't do homework. Maybe they feel like it's a lot. Some people mm. I know feel like it's a lot. Wink wink. Mm. Okay. I don't think 14 lines. I'm just making sure you hear my message. I do hear your message. You are wonderful. Mm -hmm. And that's why when you get to college, you're going to be like, this is it. College, if I go to college. Oh, you're going to college, girl. You're going to be fine. You're going to be like, this is so easy. I can't believe I'm paying for it. You like, can't make me go to college. You don't know my plans. Okay, what are you going to do then? I don't know yet, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows your plans. <laughs> Are you going to be an actress? Did you watch Finding Ohana? I watched Finding Ohana. Yes. Did you like it? Um. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think. Well, I don't think that the dad would be a part of the Night Marchers. I think if anyone got in the way of the Night Marchers, they just like, 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 if they got in the way, they just like hurt them and then. And how was he a part of it? It's not like he was in the Hawaiian days. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I, think it would, I think it would only be like. Like he signed up to be a Night Marcher when he passed. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Oh. Um, Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I haven't even, I, I have a hard time watching those things because it's so commercialized, you know, and romanticized that I just have a hard time. Like I haven't even watched Moana or. You haven't watched Moana. <laughs> Remember, I don't have children. So why would I? Yeah. Well, it's like they put a lot of Hawaiian words there and then they translate it for the white people. But it's like good <laughs> i mean they do really good like themes like telling you what not to steal stuff not to go out like the couple areas and like um, other stuff like that sacred places uh, yeah Jaden, is that a essential oil diffuser thing 
Yeah, I'm playing with it. It's oh really nice well, nice thank goodness there. you're not vaping over there. No, my cat comes up here and it's like kind of freaked out at some points, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, you guys. Go choose a poem. Um okay. Yeah. okay, bye Lise. Bye Jaden. Good job, you guys. You guys are awesome.